Hello, hello. Get our journal. Yes, this thing is massive. Um, and we're going to be doing some art journaling because I just came from my friend mom to create live. And I was so pumped after seeing her live that I was like, you know what? I need to go next. So here I am. Hello, hello, Janet. So um, let me just get my screen up so that I can see the chat room as it goes and it plays itself out. <clears throat> That way I can read you guys' comments. <clears throat> Hello, Sasson. And um, pretty much I got my art journal already just so because I was just sewing it while um, mom to create. I'm going to incorporate maybe some images from here that are probably fuzzy somewhere, somewhere along the lines. So we shall see. Crafting with Ivy. Hello. Oh, hi, Crafting with Ivy. How are you? Thanks for joining us. So I have um, have some fun goodies. Um, I have here some stencils from the Wish app that I purchased a while ago that I haven't yet used. So we're going to be um, using some of them. These are absolutely gorgeous. And I got them for a really, really awesome price. Um, so I got that one. Not sure which ones I'm going to be using. Let's see how this goes like this. I got this one. I got this one, which is absolutely gorgeous. I am completely in love with this one right here. I love these kinds of things like that, these kind of motifs. So I have that one as well. And I have this one, which has a little bit of everything. And it's an awesome size. Love that. And I have this little one, but I'm not going to be doing nothing see things. Um, so I'm going to be putting this to the side for now. I also have some other stencils that we'll see how we incorporate them. So I got some other beautiful stencils here. Let me just um, pull them out. I got these two by Finnebear, um, which has this beautiful um, stamps on top. And then it's got this um, really cute like bubbles. And then this one, which is all butterflies. So I did the gesso already, and the gesso that I use um, is this deco art gesso. So I already pre gessoed the pages. It dries super fast. And I used my brayer and a little spatula to kind of spread that around. So the first thing that I'm going to start doing is actually spreading out some color. So I'm going to get some color onto my pages. And then we're going to be stenciling some backgrounds in there, doing some stamping. And then we'll be adding some of the final touches and seeing how we spruce them up. If I even get to use them, because right now my mind is still kind of like, do, 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 where do we go from here? So I have a, my handy dandy brayer. And the first thing that I'm going to do is actually start adding some color, some colors to my background. So let's see here. I have some Deco Art Media Fluid Acrylics, which are very loose um, kinds of acrylics. So let's go ahead and um, start adding some colors to here. And I'm just going to use my brayer to kind of spread some of these colors out. Okay, this one seems to be a little bit on the dry side. Let's see this one. <laughs> Aw. Thank you, my love. Of course, that's what friends are for. That is what friends are for. So I'm just gonna add some white so that I have a nice um, base to kind of start blending some of these colors out. So I'm just gonna get that on there as best as it will come on. I have a while that I haven't painted, so this is definitely gonna be fun. I love to paint as most of you guys have been to my channel before know. I love, love, love to paint. Let's go ahead and add some primary magenta as well to this. And I just want to add little bits here and there. And let's get the brayer action kind of going. Just get some of these colors to kind of blend out as best as they can. This is just like a base for now. So we'll see what else kind of goes in here. Gotta sometimes get your fingers in there and get them dirty, but that's okay. 
I'm going to use some of this PH Martin um, in saffron yellow. So let's get some of those. Hello, Becky. How are you? Thanks for joining. So we're just going to add a few of these, maybe not drops because the dropper seems to not be working. I got these on clearance at um, Hobby Lobby. So let's just get a little bit of that on there. And then we're going to be using our brayer to kind of incorporate some of these colors and just see where it all kind of goes. And hopefully you guys can see the full um, spread nicely. Let's put the lid back on that. Let's get our brayer and see if this will spread for me nicely. I love bold, intense kind of backgrounds to start with, and then I start dulling it down as I go. Let's go ahead and grab some of this green. I can open it. Here we go. I love green. It's one of my favorite colors. So we'll see where this all kind of ends up going. And we'll do some stamping and some stenciling to add more interest to the background. This brayer that, I, that I'm using now, I currently, I bought it off of Wish. And as you can see, it tries to unscrew itself and fall apart mid-action. It cannot handle all of the excitement of um, doing what it's got to do. <laughs> so while this is kind of drying up, let's go ahead and get some other colors going on in here. Let's see what else, what else, what else. Let me grab some more paint. Some of my favorite go-tos. I'm gonna use some of this neon lights by Deco Art, and is it called Knockout Blue? So let's give this a good shaking. Let's add a few dabs here and there, and this will help to dull out some of those colors. Bring some of that paint right over to these edges. And that's what backgrounds are supposed to be for. You're supposed to be able to just layer different things. So the different things kind of play peekaboo with each other. Not too serious, not too serious. I'm gonna use a sponge, just thin it out some places maybe pick up some of that paint, get a nice frame going on all around it. This journal is massive. So I do use it often, but not as often as I should just because of its size. And yes, that's Dr. PH Martin's um, inks, right? That's what it is. Iridescent inks. Now let's go in here with maybe some chalk paint. And this color is called Innocence. Again, another product by Deco Art. And I'm just going to add a little bit here and there just so that I don't have uh, so much blue. And again, I'm going to go ahead and use my brayer. So you see, even when you're using many bold colors, like the greens and the reds are very intense, 
you can always go ahead and dull some of those colors out by just bringing a color that's a little bit more muted into the scene and maybe pushing a little bit of those very bold, intense colors to the background. Then I use my sponge now to just sop up any little globs of glue, um, not glue, but paint that I might have. Hello, Sharon. No problem, darling. Thanks for um, stopping by either way. We appreciate you. So just picking up some of this, this will help it to dry faster as well. I normally do not use a heat tool when I'm doing my art journaling because in my room, um, the electrical outlet is not the most reliable and I do not want to end up in a dark space <laughs> mid, mid live streams. So I have you guys wondering, where did she go? Where did she go? So more or less, I'm going to let this kind of uh, dry for a minute or two because this paint dries really, really fast. And then I'll come back in um, and do some stenciling on here. And I'll start playing around with some of my stencils. I'm gonna go ahead and, um, oh, I wanted to use some of this too. Let me use some of this. This is um, Fossilized Amber by um, Tim Holtz. Is it the distress paint? It's the only distress paint that I found at Hobby Lobby when I went, so. This is okay. Let me, I'm just gonna add a little dot here and there, and this I'm actually gonna blend in with the sponge, just because I don't want it to be um so much. So I'm just gonna kind of move this along here. And usually for me, my backgrounds have nothing to do with what my final product ends up being. Um, I just usually create my background and then get my inspiration for what the final piece is. But usually those two really have no relation. They just somehow tend to go together. Um, I guess it's about making it work. I'm gonna try to uh, get in there as much as I can right into that little crease there. And look, my hands are already getting dirty, so this is awesome. This is exactly what we want. We want dirty hands. <laughs> so as that is, oh, my phone. Okay. One second, I dropped my phone. Sounds to be happening to me a lot lately. Okay. Are you going to stay? Yes, you're going to stay. Awesome. Let me move this to the side. I'm definitely going to need maybe some black. Let me close up my little bottles. Hello, data girl. Thanks for joining us. So while this is kind of um, setting itself up, what am I going to do? Let's see. We're almost there, it's still a little sticky. Let me just pick up some of those excess blotches here and there. Let me go ahead and grab the stamps that I'm gonna be using to add some background and add some interest to my page because I'm definitely gonna be doing some stamping. Definitely gonna have some fun with some of these babies here. So let's get this baby opened. Nothing like opening up a brand new um, toy, opening up that package. Let's get the stencil out. Let's get this stamp out as well. And get this baby ready. Yes. This one is super cute. I'm sorry if I get glare in you guys' eyes. It has suns and moons and just time pieces and butterflies. And it's very kind of like all over the place, which I kind of love. It's got a little bit of everything. This one has like scripted um, hearts. 
and things of that nature. It's got like um, uh, hearts and music notes and just different kinds of things. It looks very distressed and kind of sketchy. Love that as well. And then we have a background, a butterfly background. So let me just get those kind of ready and going while that kind of dries itself out. We're almost there. I could definitely start stamping in some of the acrylic parts. So we'll get that kind of going. Let me grab myself some ink pad. I'm going to be using some Rangers in um, Aquamarine. We're also going to be using some Magenta Hue. And we are going to be using some black. So we got that going. And I'm going to start adding some of my um, scripts to some of these parts. And then we'll start adding some of the other layers. Yes, 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 yes. You know that um, for me, painting is like second nature. Anything to do with paint is just something that I really love. And at this point in time, I'm not really caring um, how much of the stamp I'm getting. Again, this is mainly working on background for right now. And just adding little elements, little peekaboos here and there. Little peekaboos here and there. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process now with the with the blue one, with the aquamarine, and adding a little bit of the same kind of stamping in a different color. I'm not really caring so much how straight or how off, off, off on the side it is. I just wanna get this baby on here. That's my only concern right now is to get some of these colors on there. Awesome, Jackie, thanks for joining. And now, I'm not even cleaning off my stamp, uh, my stamp itself. I'm allowing some of those colors to kind of blend into each other a little bit. Not worried if the ink or the print is legible or not, if it looks smudged or not, all of that is not really as important to me. And I think that's it for that one. Let's go ahead and pull in some of these other ones. And let's see what we use. I like the sun. So let's um, get the sun. Let's get some sun action. I'm going to grab myself a little block. Here we go. This is the little um, Dollar Tree. Little Dollar Tree block. Um, Which doesn't change the color in the pad. Well, it would, but since I stamped most of it out, it's not too bad. And however it comes out, I am a-okay with that. Again, I'm not looking for perfection because it's background. So a lot of these things will be um, hidden at some point in time. I'll be just sewing with the brayer. I'll be doing all kinds of different things to this. This is just to create some little things that are going to show here and there. Nothing too major. Nothing too major at all. Where is my wipe? Let's put this sun back. Let's go for some of these butterflies. Yes. Who does not like butterflies? Let's use this one. It says, there to spread your wings. Let's use this one. And 
And I'm going into these with some of the black. And kind of overlaying, just overlaying some stamping here and there. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Hopefully you guys are catching most of that. This journal is so large that it literally takes up most of my crafting space. <laughs> so I'm like fumbling through everything here. But it's all right. It's okay. So I think that'll work for me. I got a good amount of stamping going on on this background. Now let's go ahead and do some stenciling. Let's put this baby back. And let's see. Okay. I need to get myself. Let me see if I have my stenciling brush here. If not, I will have to do this by hand. Let's see. So I have my stenciling brush here. I was literally cleaning that brush out yesterday. Hopefully that finds it. Okay. It seems that I have cleaned it and not know, not know where I put it. So we're gonna keep it going. And we're gonna just use our sponge. We're gonna use our sponge. And let's see what we wanna do here. Let's use some black. Hello, Rosa. Thanks for joining us. So I'm going to use some black. I'm going to put a little bit, just a little bit on here. I just want to catch little bits and pieces here. Little bits and pieces, you guys. Let's grab some more. And again, not necessarily being too precise. So we don't need to be too precise. This is all background, you guys. This will all somehow either get faded into the background. Hello, Leiling. This will get faded into the background or something or the other. But we'll end up losing some of these elements. So, you know, don't put them in places you care about. Because <laughs> chances are you might lose it in translation. Let's go ahead and put some of this up here. And if you work with little bits of paint at a time, Chances are is that your stenciling will come out a lot better when you saturate whatever tool you're using to apply your stenciling, especially when it comes to paint. You, you run a higher risk of it kind of going under the stencil itself and kind of messing up your image. So a little dab of paint and work off of that. That usually works well for me. All right, so I got some of that going. Let's get a little bit of butterflies going in here as well because I want to use all of my toys. Good night. So let's grab some of these little butterflies here. And I'm thinking I'm going to be using um, some of the butterflies that I have in those papers. So 
I think that this will work well. For this. Let's see, let's grab a little bit more paint. Then I'm gonna move over to my um, other um, Dr. PH Martins. I think I'm gonna be using next to add some of my other stenciling that I have here from the other stencils that I purchased. I wanna add a little bit of everything on here. Just here and there. I'm thinking one more right about here that should do it. Okay, so we have that. Let me go ahead and grab my other stencils and see and see all the wonder. Let's see. Um, I kind of like this one. Let's see how I can kind of use it. thinking something like that. Now, one thing I will say about these stencils, they are pretty thin. They're not as thick as like, let's say like this one is, it feels like it's a lot thicker. I mean, when you hold it, it can, you can hold it kind of stiff. These, they're very flimsy. Even when you try to hold it stiff, it's still kind of bent out of shape. So, but you get what you pay for. So you do have to be a little bit gentler when it comes to these kinds of stencils that you're buying from overseas. So just keep that in mind when you're using them. Thank you, thank you. I love it when you love it. So let's go ahead and um, I think what I would like to do is maybe add something like this. So with some green maybe, I'm not sure. I'm thinking, I'm thinking you guys. Let's see. Let's see how it'll look. Let's try a little bit and see how that'll look. So I'm just gonna clean off the excess that I have on here and let's see. Subtle little effects, right? Let's see. Let's see how that looks. I don't want to pour too much of it on because I don't want it to kind of seep too heavily under the image because this is a very loose kind of medium. So we'll see. We'll see how it kind of looks once it's all um, stamped in there. So I'm just kind of pouncing it on because you can't really rub it with this kind of a stencil because you're going to end up picking up some of the pieces that are under there. So I'm gonna try like this for now and see what it does. I think, I think we're not in a rush. Yes, definitely. You definitely have to take your time um, when you're using these kinds of stencils because again, they're so thin, beautiful, beautiful detail, but they're so thin that you do have to be a little bit more cautious when you're using them. I'm very excited to try it out and see how it feels um, with actually some modeling paste. I didn't wanna go that route now because I know that um you know it's a little late already. I normally don't craft this late at night, at least not live. <laughs> and I didn't wanna have you guys here forever in a day waiting while that kind of dries. So let's see. So you get a little something something, which is kind of cool. You get a little um, little kind of effect there. Nothing too major. Hopefully you guys can see that well. You probably can't really see it too well because from what I can see, you really can't see it too well. So you know what? I think I'm gonna go with the black just so that you guys are able to see the detail on it. I kind of like it. So I'm gonna put whatever I have left on my sponge, I'm just gonna allow it to kind of go um, you know, all over here. 
I use up whatever I have left in here, but I will proceed. I'm going to put it on some of the yellow here. But I'm going to proceed mostly on um, with the black. And I think that sponge is pretty much dry. So let's go back in here and let's get some black. Yes, it is. I love it. I love it, love it. So let's get some of this. And I'm just going to add in different little areas. Just things to show. And again, just kind of pouncing it on. I don't want to rub it in any kind of way because I want it to actually last me a while. <laughs> And we'll see what happens. The sponge is soaking up more paint than it's releasing. But I don't want to put so much paint that then I'm having a hard time trying to get it out. And it goes everywhere. Let's see. Love that. Let's try right here. Spout some of that in there. We're not going to spend too much time on the stenciling aspect of it, but I do want to get a little bit of it in there. And then I do want to try maybe one more. One more stencil and see how I like it. So a little something, something, nothing too, too major. Let's see, let's see, let's see. You guys know that when I'm painting, I am in my element. that right there I just blotched it up so I think I'm gonna be good with this for now let's see let's see okay let me kind of put this on here put this little card stack under it let's see what else do I have here that maybe I would like to use Maybe for a different kind of page. All right, so I think I'm gonna be good for that for now. Only thing that I would like to do now is maybe add a little bit of my gesso here and there, just to kind of bring a little bit of that into the background. Nothing too major. Just rub it in with my fingers. Just a little bit here and there. I want the stencils to show, but I don't want it to be uh, so bold. So I'm just going to rub it in with my fingers here and there. So that some of that darkness kind of goes and fades into the background. So you see it, but you don't really see it, right? Hello, Crystal. Thanks for joining us. So you kind of see it, but you don't really see it. Right? It's there, but it's plain peekable. It's kind of hiding. Let's see. Let's do a little bit on this side. If you guys can't see for any reason, let me know, and I'll move uh, my camera. I'll position it a little bit different. And I'm rubbing it out with my fingers because that'll pretty much give me the thinnest version of this gesso. Um, it won't be so overwhelmed, so overwhelming with the white because I do want my colors 
And I do want these things to show, but I don't want them to take over. I just want a little bit. I just want you to be able to see it, that there's something happening there, but you quite don't know what until you look at it up close. All right, so that's pretty much it for the just away for right now. I have a little bit, not too much of it. I kind of pushed it a little bit more further back into the background, which I'm pretty satisfied with for right now. And I'm gonna cut some things out. Where did I put my papers to cut out? Where did I put them? Okay, um, hmm. where did I put them? Good question. Give me a second, you guys. Let me see what my papers. I just have them, and I don't know where I put them. That's interesting does anybody know <laughs> did anybody see where i took it at where i put them under the book yes thank you <laughs> i could have sworn i lifted the book up and i didn't see it so let's see i like these birds and i also like this big um, blue butterfly. So let's try that. And then I'll probably end up painting some kind of a branch or something because I'm not going to cut that out. I'll probably take out the little nest, but I'm going to cut the birds out. And then I'll probably put them on a nest and then I'll just have this butterfly kind of coming in. So like the birds are in the back and the, the butterfly is coming in from a little bit closer of an angle. Or maybe I'll just cut these pretty butterflies out. I think that those will look cute. So we'll do that. What did I do with my scissor now? <laughs> See, Janet, you're not the only one this happens to. The big butterfly? Okay. All right, all right. I got the big butterfly. Let me cut out these tiny little birds. They're super, super tiny. It won't take me no time at all to cut these little babies out. but I need the beak, so beak, stay on. Okay, so pretty much, just letting this paper kind of glide through my scissor and just moving the paper and not the scissor. That's what I learned here on YouTube <laughs> from watching other people. You didn't see which, the birds? So we are going to be doing a little bit of collaging here. Nothing too, too major. I will be doing some hand painting as well. And my bird lost its beak. It lost part of it anyway. Now let's see. And here we go. And this is from a calendar from the Dollar Tree that I bought at the beginning of the year. So that's one of them. And we'll have these this bird here somewhere. And let me grab the other one. It's easier when you work with little pieces than with this huge sheet. So Davida's here. Hello, Davida. Welcome back. I'm having a little bit of an impromptu. Uh, live session today. I was itching to do some mixed media for the past couple of weeks because I've been doing a lot of paper crafting. 
And I felt like my paints and brushes were kind of yelling at me in the background, like, hey, when you plan to use this? Hey, when you plan to use this? Hey, what's going on? But you forgot about us? You don't love us anymore? What's going on? Huh? What's going on? So I really felt the need to show them some tender loving care. And so once our mom to create was live today, I couldn't help myself. I said, it's now or never. There we go. So that's two birds, super cute, got no legs. It's okay. <laughs> it's got no legs, but it's okay. It will survive. I promise you. So I was told this big, humongous butterfly. So let's do that. Let's do the big, humongous butterfly. Leaving the antennas behind. And I'm sorry if I'm out of frame, you guys, but I need to see what I'm doing. <laughs> so hopefully you guys can understand. Because I do not want to decapitate the flower, the, the butterfly and just have wings. So we shall see how this is going to go. And then I'll add more things to the page depending on what it needs and where I feel it needs to be kind of balanced in. So let me just kind of cut that off real quick. Oh, that's cool. See, we're cutting, we're all cutting together. So you feel my struggle right about now. <laughs> All right, let me cut that excess piece off. Just makes it a little bit easier to manage when you don't have um, this clumsy paper kind of like in your way. And I'm trying to be true to the shape as much as I possibly can. We're doing all right so far. I'm doing all right. So let's see. My little butterfly. We're almost at the finish line. I personally love nature scenes. I just love the peace and tranquility that it brings to me just to see, you know, just birds and butterflies and nature in, in general. All right, all right, we got it, we got it, you guys, we did it. All right, so let's put that there. I need to paint some branches, so let me put this here. So I can get my paint on. Yes, it's time for some painting. I need that in my life. So let's see, I'm gonna grab two brushes and a little tray and let's get some brown if I can find it. Let's see, I'm gonna put this, remember you guys, I put it under. I put the birds <laughs> in the pages, just in case I'm like, where are my birds? Where are my birds and my butterfly? Thank you. Yes, a calendar. You can make awesome things with the weirdest of supplies. So this is some burnt umber. And I'm just gonna kind of freehand this for right now. I'm gonna just add some water to my little palette here. I'm 
and let's see. Let the magic begin. All right, so I'm thinking I'll put my birds right around here. So I'm just going to kind of drag this kind of out like so. And I'm kind of barely touching the paper here. I'm just kind of allowing the paint to just do what it do. And I'm thinking I'm gonna to try to get myself a thinner um, kind of brush, even thinner still than this. And then once I, I allow it to kind of do that, then I kind of go in and fill it in a little bit and start kind of really, um, almost like if I was using a pencil, then just kind of going into whatever details and stuff I wanted to kind of have. So it's almost like sketching with paint, even though you can't really erase this kind of sketch. You can always go over with gesso if you don't like it. Let's see. I need something just a little bit thinner. If I can find, if I can find it. For some reason, for some odd reason, here we go. Maybe this one will work. Do -do -do. You know how branches have those teeny tiny little twigs um, and little branches that kind of come off. So I need to be able to kind of do that. And again, just kind of barely touching um, the canvas, letting it kind of drag itself out. Letting it allow to, to do its own little sweet things here and there. Right, because branches are all kinds of shapes. Now, personally, I know you probably guys have heard me say this before. Um, when it comes to aesthetic purposes, like drawing and stuff like that, I prefer a tree that doesn't have any leaves. Not that I can add the leaves to it because I can, but it's just the way I like it. It's almost like, um, well, how I, you know, how I interpret it. It's almost like, um, you know, like something alive and, and in harmony on something that is kind of like not so alive, I guess, um, because the tree is going through its transition of renewal. I'm gonna bring this little branch all the way out to here. And again, just allowing it to kind of drag itself out. And here I'm gonna kind of um, insinuate that this tree is not just coming out of thin air, it is actually coming from somewhere. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that brown right along that edge. It's a really tall tree. Hopefully you guys can see that well. It's a really tall tree and no, it just doesn't have one branch. <laughs> it's got other ones that I'll be adding like so. This is my most relaxing thing to do is to kind of like draw these kinds of trees. I just love drawing these kinds of trees. So you guys will see this very often, um, you know, in the stuff that I create on my channel, you'll see a lot of nature type scenes. just because it's just something that I really, really love to do.
Then I'll go over it later with a little bit of highlights here and there. Bring this branch kind of up like so. This one. Just bring this kind of up. When I'm doing this kind of stuff, I'm like zone in the zone. I think literally everything could be falling apart around me and I'll just be like, not even noticing. Or maybe I notice and I just, I <laughs> don't much. And it's cool because even if you have shaky hands, it's okay because branches are crooked and imperfect and they come in all different kinds of, you know, shapes. So it doesn't matter as long as your brush makes contact with that paper, you are good to go. There's, there's, you don't need to be an expert to draw a tree. They come all kinds of ways and in many different colors. So you can get away with a lot with drawing trees. Okay, so we have that tree there. While we let that kind of dry, I will probably go into it, maybe with a fine liner or something of that nature and add some really thin, some really thin ones because I don't think I have a thinner brush than this. I mean, I do, but it's all frayed. <laughs> For some reason, those really thin brushes, like those detail brushes, don't last nothing in my hands. Um, they fall apart. They get all frayed very, very easily. So let me just wet my brush to remove some of the drying paint and let's see what we do here um okay i think i'm gonna have this branch kind of coming off from the bottom corner i'm sorry if you guys can hear that but um see that but that's more or less where it's coming from because we really don't know how tall these trees are we don't know what forest these trees are from we just know that they're on a you know they're on a branch and they are hanging out and they're in peace. They're at peace with themselves and with everything around them and they're in their habitat. And they're doing what butterflies and birds do, which is kind of just sit around and land on things. And that's quite all right. That's what we want them to do. As long as they're not landing on our heads, we're good. We're good. This is one of the most relaxing activities that I can do. It's literally, I can just draw branches for days. But I'll try not to do that here, you guys. <laughs> I'll try not to do that here. I know you guys want to get to the gift part. I don't know. Let's see. I'll move that down just a little bit. Will you guys be able to see a little bit more? Hopefully. Hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit more and see how that bottom kind of looks. And literally with the lightest amount of pressure, as you're drawing out your branches, the lightest amount of pressure, just let that brush kind of glide. It's okay if it gets a little bit thick. You can always pick up right where you left off and just the lightest amount of pressure and drag it out. Thank you. Thank you, babe. All right, so I think that's about it for now for the branches that I'm going to put out. Let's see how my butterflies are going to look on these branches and how my birds are going to look on these branches, and then we'll take it from there. So let's see. We can have one bird, like, right there. We'll have one butterfly kind of coming off of that branch like so. We'll have... 
this bird kind of coming up off of that like that. Let's see. Let me bring my journal over so that you guys can hopefully see how that's looking. So I'm thinking something like that. I did have a nest in one of these pictures. Here we go. Let me cut this nest out. It is humongous, but who knows? Maybe we can make it work. Thank you, darling. So I'm going to just fuzzy cut um, this um, nest real quickly. And we can put it, where can we put it? We can put it like right there. I think there's an egg in here. Let's put the egg in there. We have one humongous egg sitting right inside of that little nest. So let's glue these babies down. But first, before I glue that baby down, let me add a little bit more branch here, just coming off the top. Because um, I think the butterfly needs a little bit more. So I'm going to bring a branch kind of coming off the top real quick. So the branch has a little bit more of an anchor. And this doesn't really matter because the butterfly itself will cover up both of this. I just wanted it to have something to kind of anchor itself in. It is, it's, how can I say? I know, I know. It's, I know that it seems like, um, I know it seems like I make it seem easy, but it's, when it comes to trees specifically, it's not too hard. Um, again, a lot of light pressures and just allowing the paint to kind of drag itself out. Almost like if you was passing a feather on somebody, you know, you just wanted to tickle them really quickly. You would just do it really lightly. Kind of hold your, your um, paintbrush in that way. Thank you. Just kind of hold your paintbrush in that way. Very kind of lightly. And usually what I'll do is I'll, like, I'll offset my hands really quickly like with my pinky. That way I don't touch, um, I don't put like flat pressure. I don't want to put the brush like flat like that. I'm trying to just use the really tip of it and just kind of very lightly just kind of drag it. It's okay if it shakes around. You're creating branches. That's perfectly fine. Branches have, you know, those kinds of textured um, looks to them. You're good to go. And you're good to go. So something like that, like it just kind of landed on that branch. I'm going to go ahead, this is pretty dry, and I'm going to glue that those birds down. I'm going to use some matte medium for that. So I'm going to use some matte medium. And maybe this little brush right here. And this is like the mama and the papa watching over the little baby bird. 
that has not hatched yet. They're super excited, waiting for it to come, come out of its shell. So what I said, I'm gonna put this like right here. And again, I'm not worried about legs, you guys. Because for all we know, they're sitting on their legs and you can't see them. <laughs> That's what they're doing. They're sitting on their legs and you can't see them. If you want legs, you can always draw those in. Just kind of smoothing that out. Petting my little bird and just smoothing it out. Moving that glue out of um, out of its way so that it doesn't create you no know, significant um, ripples and air bubbles. And now I'm gonna glue the next one. And try not to go too, too heavy when you're using these thin kinds of papers and glue because then they'll ripple. They'll ripple out. So if you go really light on the glue, then you have a, a higher success rate of it just gluing itself out straight. And this one kind of lost the beak, but it's okay. It's okay. So now to do this one, thin amounts. You don't want globs of glue on here. You just want thin amounts. Spread that glue out as, as thinly as you can. So it does not saturate, doesn't have too much time to saturate that paper and wrinkle it up. I'm gonna put that half first, then I'll be back to add the rest. I'm adding the glue as I go. Again, only because I do not, this paper is not designed for that. It's not really designed for collaging. So you wanna add as little bit of glue as possible and just glue as you go so that you don't have that many air bubbles creating wrinkles in your paper as you glue them down. And just smoothing it out so that you've moved that glue around as much as possible. Again, the key here is, is just to glue it down. You can also use your brayer for this. That is also a very good tool to have and use. There we go. Everything is pretty much good to go. 
gonna add this excess glue that I have here, right here. And I'm gonna add this little nest right here. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's not my butterfly, <laughs> but thank you. It's a cutout. I just cut it out. It's a cutout from a calendar. And now let's use the little egg. Actually, everything here that I've, um, all the pieces are all from a calendar. Let's get our egg in there. They have one gigantic egg, even though they're the tiniest little birds. But we don't know the perception of distance here. We don't know how close the birds are to the nest, vice versa, even though it kind of appears like they are. We have no idea really where they're landing. It's like when you look at the sun, you could put your finger and cover the whole sun up, but the sun is too far from you to really be able to cover it up, right? So it's kind of that situation here. So you can get away with a lot when it comes to that. Bag. All right, so I think that my pieces are good to go. Yes, me likey. But if I still feel like it needs something. So what we are going to do, even though I'm not the biggest fan of leaves, we're going to make some. Yes, we are. We're going to paint some leaves, you guys. Not just any leaves, though. These are going to be metallic leaves. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can, you can. <laughs> Almost, right? You could block it with one finger, but it's still too immense. It's still too immense. So I'm going to use some metallic paint here. Haven't used these babies in a while. Thank you. And we're going to use some crystal green. I'm just going to pour a little bit of that. And they don't even come out. Come out, come out, baby. I need you. Here we go. And I'm going to get myself another brush. Let's see which brush am I going to get. Um... Give me a second, you guys. Let me just rinse out. Where did I put my water? Here it is. I just need to clean my brush really quickly because I do not want all of that paint to get caked on. And then I am unable to properly clean them. So really quickly, just to get some of that gunky paint off. Just going to rinse it off really, really quickly. And let's see. All right, so I think I'm gonna use this one right here. I'm gonna use this one right here. And again, let me just grab myself a little spray of water just so that I can dip my brush whenever I feel I need it. Yes, I forgot to use my brush with the glue. No, don't use your brush with the glue. <laughs> that is a no-no. Yes, I was using this brush with um, some inks, some um, inks that I have. So there was a little bit of that gel ink on there. All right, so I also have some of this phthalo green blue. Let's put a little bit of that in there on the side. I'm gonna dip it into this, um, this metallic green. I'm also gonna dip it into this other one. And let's just create little leaves and all I'm doing is just applying the brush just kind of flat no painting screw required just flattening it out right wherever we see a little branch not directly onto the branch we're just pretty much just lay allowing that brush and so just lay itself kind of flat, a little bit of pressure. All 
kind of like sit and lift, sit and lift. Depending on how big the trees are, depending on how much we allow it to kind of sit there. So just a little dab, little dabs. You want smaller leaves, then use a smaller brush. You just tip, 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 that's it. They do not need to physically be connected to any branches. It's just the illusion of leaves. Just the illusion. Oh no! Put it in water, put it in vinegar. Run! <laughs> Run, put it in vinegar. Put it in some vinegar right away. Heady, heady. So pretty much just allowing the brush to just lay itself kind of flat. Allowing it to just kind of lay kind of flat. Depending on how much you put, depending on how big your leaves are going to be. A little dab will do you. A little dab will do you. Thank you. Very simple. You don't need to even know how to do all of that extra stuff with, you know, adding the veins. And that's pretty much irrelevant. That's just if you're going to do like a real, you know, depiction of what a leaf is supposed to look like, then get fancy by all means. Get fancy. But if all you want is just the illusion of some leaves, from a distance, when you're on the ground and you're looking up at the leaves, you really cannot decipher what are on these leaves, how many veins it has. You can't really tell from that far. So just imagine that you're on the ground and you're looking up and you just want the illusions of these leaves, right? Just little shapes, little shapes. That's all you need, little shapes. That's all you need. That's all that you need, little shapes. Just little shapes, just dab. That's all that you need, little shapes. Let's put some under here. Like little teeny hearts. Put some right here. Put a little bit everywhere. A little bit everywhere. And I'm sorry if you guys can't see all the way to the bottom. Hopefully you can. I'm not sure how much of the bottom you guys can see. Just little dabs. Little dabs. That's all you need. Little dabs. A little bit of the metallic. A little bit of the phthalo um, blue-green. And you can use any color combination that you want. You can even add some yellow in here if you wish. It's completely up to you. It can be a realistic looking tree. Thank you so much. Or it can be uh, more whimsical and you can have pink leaves. You know, it's completely up to you and what you would like to do. It's just little dabs, a tiny little amount of pressure. The more you click it and drag it, the longer your leaf will be. So you can drag a little bit if you want to make like longer kinds of leaves. Um, just drag it out a little bit, like what I just did there. Little baby leaves, just a little dab, and you got little baby leaves. Just little insinuations. 
nothing too, too major. I have missed my paints so much. Oh my goodness, I'm having so much fun. <laughs> Can you guys tell I'm having a blast? I literally picked the most tedious task to do, which is painting a whole bunch of little leaves, just so that I could prolong my exposure <laughs> to the paints. I know, I know. It's a cruel, cruel world we live in. Let's see. I'm trying not to touch the wet paint. It did, and it does dry rather quickly. Acrylic paints do dry rather quickly. So you can really have fun. You can make your tree as bushy. If you really want to make a bushy tree, then you just have to do this over and over and over and over and over again. If you want to make it really, really saturated, then do a whole bunch. Let it dry, maybe like a minute or two so that it can set and then go over with another layer. You can add a different color, go over with another layer. You can add a different color and you can really make your tree just come to life. Thank you. Thank you. I have missed this. I cannot wait to get back into my painting. <sighs> back into my journal. I haven't worked in my journal in such a long time. My journal is literally like my escape from life and everything that has to do with it. Sometimes it serves as a way for me to soothe my soul. Other times it just serves for, as a way for me to just be creative and that in a turn soothes my soul as well. Um, so I just find our journaling to be just amazing for all different kinds of things. I absolutely love it. I'm gonna add some leaves, um, some green onto the little, um, nest because I just feel that they would kind of incorporate some of the leaves that they would find around them to make their little nest. So I'm going to add some in. Because birds will usually make their nest from the tree that they're on but as well as every other surrounding tree that's in the neighborhood, right? Everything else is in within a certain radius of them. Hi, Isabel. Welcome, welcome. And so just gonna add little green, little green leaves here and there. So just, you know, give it a little bit of color. Give it a little bit of color, you guys. And let's see. Now that we've done, I think I've got most of my branches covered. And they only, it's just starting to sprout. So there's not much going on. It's just starting to kind of come to life. Um, let's see. Should I add another layer, you guys? Should I add more leaves? Maybe with um, some yellow. Maybe I can get some metallic gold and add some greens and golds in there. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see how far I can take this. Because really, this is this page is, if I wanted to call it done, this page is pretty much done. As far as our journaling itself goes, I can do something around the edges, but this is pretty much done. Right, what I'm doing right now is playing. I am playing and having some fun. So I got some splendid gold here. And why not? Let's add some gold into some of these leaves and make this a special kind of tree that, that only grows in a special kind of place. And so I'm going to saturate my brush mainly with some of this gold. And then I'm going to add a little bit, just a little dab. And let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Let's see. Just 
a little bit. Tiny little amount. This one just has a little bit of growing right there. It almost looks like peaches or something is growing on it. <laughs> right? Like I'm growing peaches on this tree. This is like a peach tree now. Let's see. Let's drag some of these out. And again, we're not um, we're not painting them on. We're dabbing them on. So, no need to paint or worry about brush strokes. That's not what we're doing here. We're just dipping and dabbing and dipping and dabbing. That's it. We're in a, we're allowing this to do whatever it kind of wants to do. That's the fun about because maybe there's a fruit there. We don't know. There could be some peaches, definitely, definitely. So let's get some delicious fruit going. And I'm just gonna add that in there. Let's add that in there. And that's all you have to do is just dip and dab, dip and dab. And now we have a different kind of layer. Let me see if I can zoom this in just a little bit for you guys. Let's see if I can do that. Let me move this over. Here. I'm so not used to it. I don't know how these pro um, videos, you know, people do it. That they just be so on point with the zooming in and the zooming out. I'm, I forget. I did that one time. And unfortunately... People lost like half the stream because I had it all zoomed in. And you couldn't even really see what, <laughs> what I was doing in the rest of the page. All you saw was just that one part. So hopefully, I'll be a little bit more mindful of that. And I'll be able to remember that. So you see, it's just a little dab of the green and then mostly gold. And you can do this with any color. You don't even have to multicolor it. You can just do one color. That will look just as good too. Hello, Michelle. Thank you. It's coming along nicely, right? I didn't even know what I was going to do today. I just knew whatever it was, I needed to paint. I needed to paint. It was calling me. So there's really no need to fear it, you guys. I know it seems like, oh, my God, you know. But you'd be surprised what you can do with the slightest of movements. You just have to play with it and create different patterns because that's all their art really is, is just different patterns. Some patterns create faces, others create trees. It's all shapes, you guys. Don't be scared. You don't have to have like, I don't know anything about brush strokes, you guys. All I know how to do is dip my paint. That's it. I dip the brush into the paint and I stick the paint on the paper or the canvas or whatever. Whatever happens, happens. You live and you learn, you know? No fear, no fear. It's only paper, you guys. It's only paper. This is, I'm loving how this is looking with this gold on it. Yes. 
I am loving how this is looking with this gold. Anything that I've ever, anything that I've ever done on here, I've, you know, most of the things are my first time doing them. Some things I've, you know, I've done them already a few times, but it's all trial and error. Some things will work, some things won't work. You have to be okay with yourself. That's more important at the end of the day. It's having fun. It won't be therapeutic if you're fighting yourself every step of the way. So you just got to allow yourself to just be. Allow the moment to just kind of happen. Allow the moment to just kind of happen. I got some paint on my hands from putting it down on the paper. I must have touched something that was wet. And so, just have fun. Grab copy paper and just dab. You want to make a flower? Well, just dab. Dip the brush, dab, 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 dab. You know more or less a, a flower is in a circular shape, so just dab, 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 all the way around. Try different colors, and you'll be surprised what you come out with. That's it. Yes, yes, Isabel. The hardest thing is actually convincing yourself to start. That's the hardest thing I see is actually saying to yourself, you know what? I'm going to do it. Once you say, I'm going to do it, the rest is easy. And once you start, you won't stop. You won't stop. You won't. Because there's no such thing as something being done wrong. All it is is practice. And it doesn't matter how advanced of an artist you are, everything you do in life is practice. You do it over, you do it over until you do it better. And every time you do it better and every time you do it better, you will never achieve excellence. You will never achieve perfection. We weren't designed that way. We weren't built that way. So don't strive for that. Because we ourselves are not perfect. So how can we reproduce something that's perfect? A copy of a copy of a copy is never perfect. So, forget about perfection. It's better to just try. Just do it. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Oh, thank you. And I learn from everything else. <laughs> That's all it is. I learn from everything else. I watch a lot of people here on YouTube that give me a lot of inspiration when I go outside and I see street art or graffiti <laughs> to some. <laughs> To me, street art, to others, it might be graffiti, depending on what kind it is, you know, because we do have some obscene stuff. But, you know, I get inspired by everything, everything in itself, the way that the light is shining, a smile on somebody's face, the energy of the day, everything brings a little, you know, a little different level of inspiration. I almost forgot to add some leaves to a branch here. Could I have really done that? So it's nothing to it but to do it, you guys. Really. Don't be scared of it. I was petrified of actually coming on here and doing this and sharing with you guys and putting myself out there, you know, exposure, if you will. And all the thoughts that come that come associated with, oh, my God, what if I'm not good enough? Oh, my God. And, you know, people going to judge and this and that and this and that. But I was like, you know what? It is what it is. It's out. That's it. Can't take it back. Just did it. And I'm very happy that I did. This has been one of the most rewarding experiences with it's good and it's bad and it's pretty and it's ugly that I've ever experienced in my life. And I'm super, super happy that I did it. Yeah, don't cover it up. Just let it go. Let it go and move on to the next thing, and then you, you could always come back. Thank you, Rosa. Janet, what kind of border should I do? 
Give me an idea. I need an idea. Let me zoom back out before I forget. Let's see. There you go. I'm sorry, you guys, but like I said, the book is humongous. It is literally, if I could find my ruler and tell you guys. See, that's 12 inches. 12 plus 9 is what, 21? So it's about 21 inches when it's open. So it's really, really long. And height-wise, is about 13, maybe 14 inches. So it's a really, really big mama jamma of a book. And I love it. Love it, love it. Love it, love it. <laughs> love it, love it. Let me put some paint in the crack of this page because I am seeing some white areas. That I'm not really liking too much. So, oops, a daisy. Let me just add some paint here. Hey, you want the pages. Girl, you make beautiful art. Don't let this girl fool you, okay? If you see her planner, like, really get to see her planner. And not just the ones that she shared now. But, like, I mean her planner planners. This girl does beautiful work, you guys. And I'm sorry, but I'm blowing up your spot. <laughs> I'm letting the world know. You are an artist on the low, low. <laughs> so, yes. Janet does awesome things, too. Oh, yes, you do. So let's see. What are, what are we thinking here for um, for a border? What should I do with the border? I don't know, you guys. I don't even think I need to outline these birds. I think these birds look pretty good on their own. Normally, I would outline them. What I will probably try to do is maybe add a little bit of white here and there. But I think I'm going to use my gel pen for that if I can find it. If I can find it. I will add some white highlights here and there. And let's see. Where is where is my brown? One up brown. Let's see. Oh, thank you. Yes, like an outline. All right. Let me go ahead and just add some little highlights here and there. Nothing too major. Just a few little highlights to maybe some of the parts that are catching some light. Very lightly again, you guys. You don't need it to be any kind of... Um, you know, you don't have to fill up the whole thing with white little lines everywhere. You don't necessarily have to do that. But a little bit of highlights. Hopefully they'll show through, um, you know, on the page themselves. But this just gives it a little bit of, you know, it's catching sun somewhere. A little bit of a highlight. Nothing too major. Nothing too major. I did this page rather quickly, you guys. I never finish an art page this fast. Honestly, I take forever. Forever when I do my art. So some vines. And what color, you guys? Should I go for a brown or a blue or a green? What color? What do you guys suggest? I love your suggestions. Like a tangled vine kind of look. Like a tangled vine.
I still have some browns here, but I don't know. With the gold. Let's see, I have gold and I have green. Should I go with like a gold and a green around the page? Would that be too much? Or would that be perfect because I have a little bit of green and gold on the page already? I'm not sure, you guys. I'm not sure. Let's see. Let me practice a vine here. See how that will kind of look. I'm looking for a spot that's dry, so let's try here. With the green. Well, let's see. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I do that around the page? Yes, learning never stops. No. Okay. So what else? Let's see. Should I just do... <laughs> and you're doing awesome i love seeing what you're doing so far i just wish you would make more videos even if it's not even if it's not of you doing it but of your finished result your finished process you know like shares and stuff like that and hopefully you'll start doing live because it's a lot easier for me to like um share with you guys live what I'm doing then it is for me to like you know do the other stuff because voiceovers and stuff like that it drives me a little crazy I do it but I get I kind of get off topic if you notice <laughs> I feel out the wagon well climb back in the wagon I'm slowing down so you can climb on in so what do you think Janet the dots with the dashes or what Yes, it's the gift that keeps on giving for sure. There's nothing to it, bum, bum, but to do it, bum, bum. she said nothing. Do nothing, leave it alone. What you trying to tell me, that this sucks? <laughs> Should I do some stamping on the edges? Or some stenciling, maybe some stenciling on the edges? What do I have? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yes to the stenciling? Okay. So let's see. Um, what do I have here? In black? Do some stenciling in black, you guys, or what color? With the green? I'm thinking I'll use this one. It's got this kind of pattern on it. Ah, why are you flipping for me? Okay. It's got this kind of pattern on it. And black, 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 black it is. All right, so let me put that there. So I'm gonna do the oval parts, I think. I think that'll probably be the best bet for me. So let me put this there. Let me get some of the stuff out of my way so that I can really have room to like work with this thing. Cause right now, I don't have any room. And I'm gonna put my <clears throat> mixed media, my media paints, back. I'm going to leave my black out. I'm going to put these back. 
so that I have room to play. Let's put these babies back where they came from. Back home you go. These back home you go as well. All right. Now I have a little bit more room. And I don't know what I did with my stencil brush. I wonder if Sasson took it from me. He could have. He could have. He could have taken it from me, but we'll see. All right. So I need something. So I'm going to use my little stamping block to add my black paint to it. You should try. You should try. You never know until you actually go. Go, go, go. I encourage everybody to give it a try. All right. So let's see. All right, you guys. Pray for me now. Hopefully this is not a complete disaster. It's so thin, this stencil. So I'm hoping, oh, no, no. I'm so not happy right now. I'm so not happy. No. It messed it up. It messed it up. I'll let that dry. That I will go over you. Because you will not defeat me. Okay. That's not going to work. So, let's try this. Let me try this way. I'm only going to do that. And let's see. I think it was my fault, though. So I'm not going to blame this pencil. I think it was my fault. So it's going to get a pass from me. So I kind of saw where it was going, and I didn't stop myself. So I'm going to do this. So let's do this. And let's see if perseverance will prevail. Okay, the peace de la Rizzi stones. Be on the crafts. Okay, that's a little better. That's a little better. That's a little better. That's a little better. It's a little better. Let's see. So now we're getting a little bit, it's getting kind of late. So I don't think this is the best paint to do this in. I think I should have used a regular body acrylic for this. Because it's a little thin. And I don't really like how it's looking. So, I'm going to go with a little bit of padded leather. Let's see what that can do. Let's see what that can do. Yes. My poor husband, he has to deal with a wackadoo all day long. Because I'm just insane in the membrane. That looks so dark. I think this is the ticket, you guys. Let's see. 
Oh, that looks a lot better. That looks a lot better. Yes. Finally. Finally, finally, finally. All right. You guys might not be able to see me through the bottom, but I'm going to do the bottom real quick. And then once I'm done with this border, you guys, we are done for the day, I think. But I'm going to be honest with you guys. I almost regret doing the border. <laughs> I think it was looking really awesome without it. I don't think it really needed it. I almost regret it. But let's see what it looks like before I fully commit to that regret. Mostly because I couldn't find my stencil brush. So I ended up having to use this foam, which is okay, I guess. But it makes my life just a little harder. The Peace de la Risi Stones. Viva la France. Well, we're not in France. We're in America. But Viva la France anyway. Okay. I must have saw that thing like in the Bugs Bunny cartoons or something, like when I was little. And it's always stuck with me, that little thing. You guys have probably heard it before in one of the Bugs Bunny cartoons, too. <laughs> so my book is upside down, you guys. It's not that I flipped my camera. I'm doing the top border now. And I'm going to get more of that. Viva mis habichuelas. <laughs> yes. Yes. Viva las habichuelas. Y el arroz con pollo. Y las chuletas fritas. Yum, yum. All right. So let's see, let's see. And I'm using patent leather, so this is supposed to dry really shiny once it's all done. So it won't be so dull around the edges. And let's see. Whoop, whoop. And where is it? Right here? Right there. Right there. Yes. It's going to be like a picture frame. But I won't do this side because the other tree's there. But I will do this side. So let's see. I'm trying to get it just right. All right. With stencils, sometimes how you hold it makes a world of a difference. And this little contraption is really handy for doing this. It stabilizes my hand. It keeps my fingers clean. And I don't have to go crazy. And I can apply the pressure where I want it for pouncing on this paper. All right. 
loving it. I just need a little bit more and I am done because you guys down there, I have a boo-boo. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just not. I'm going to just leave it be for right now. I'll fix it later when I feel happy again. Because right now, I'm not too happy with it because it went under the stencil. It went under the stencil like a bad, bad stencil. So it played with my feelings. And I'm not happy with it right now. So I'm going to leave it be. All right. All right, you guys. We did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. Uh, let me move this big mama jamma all the way around. And now all that we have left to do is throw some white spots around. And we got it. Yup, yeah, we got it. We got it. Yep, yep, we got it. Start all over in another one. You crazy as heck for that one. What I look like to you, a maquinita? <laughs> oh, no, 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 Johnny. No, 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 no. I'm just cleaning my brush here. <laughs> What about you, Janet? Go live, go live. <laughs> go live, go live. We miss you already. We can do it. <laughs> yeah, right? I lost the map. <laughs> and Diego <laughs> and Boots. <laughs> So let's see. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yes, I wanted to add some white paint. So let me grab some white paint. I have some here somewhere. Let me find it. Let me grab one of these ones that are drying out and spray some water in it. And then I can do it. Thank you. Huh? So we're almost there, you guys. Let me just, I added some water into my bottle. Oh, you're winning? So you go live. Huh? 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 Isabel, you overdue? You overdue? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So I'm just kind of, this is like kind of empty already. So. What I'm doing is I'm gonna use my brush to like tick, 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 tick everywhere. And to do that, I'm gonna cover up my main little elements here because I don't want them to catch paint all over them. I don't mind everything else catching paint, but I want those to stay as they are. So I'm trying to find some paper. I'm trying to find some paper. Let's see. I should have scraps somewhere. I always have scraps. I always have scraps somewhere. Right there. What color paint? I'm, I'm going to add some white splashes. I'm going to add some white splashes. I'm just like covering up some of my little elements that I don't want to um, catch any white dots. This is why I'm doing this. 
and then my massive butterfly Just do that, right? Ha, look at that! Perfect, perfect. Hopefully, my paint comes out white and not green. And let's see. Let's. Perfect. Everything is going to have little white dots around my desk, my walls. This is not for the faint of heart. Because chances are that you will catch little things everywhere. Oh yes, we reuse everything here, you know that. We reuse it all. Oh man, I just got a white dot on my pair of pants. It's all right, they're only jammies. They're only jammies. I'm sorry, you guys, I know you'll probably be like, oh my God, Carmen's got like, I don't know what the hell's wrong with this girl. <laughs> yes, I can be a little bit insane sometimes of the moment type stuff it does happen you do get a little bit of that while you're here hopefully it's not too contagious all right so right here Why am I, it's coming on the paper. It's, isn't it funny how most of the paint is falling on the black paper? It's mostly falling on the white paper, on the black paper. What the heck? Thank God I put that down. I will have white little snowflake butterflies and birds all over the place. What? What? No, we cannot do that right now. It's not that kind of party. There we go. There we go. Me likey. Should I do some other colors? Should I do some other colors? Should I be bold and daring and do some other colors? And if so, what colors do you recommend? Okay? Because me have no more ideas. Okay? My sponge is stuck <laughs> because the paint has started to dry. So the sponge is the <laughs> here on the side. So, yes. Blue? Blue metallic or blue regular? Shiny blue or dull blue? I have ice blue, ice, ice, baby. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see. Shiny, shiny. The woman said shiny, shiny. So let's see, let's see, let's see. See how much fun this can be? You can literally be singing to yourself, talking to yourself. Who cares? Who cares? As long as you're having fun, right? As long as you're doing to do and you're having fun. That's all that really matters, you guys. It's all that really matters. The rest is irrelevant, you know? And just a disclaimer, my little sound effects are in no way to be offensive to anybody. I'm not trying to imitate nobody, just in case. I just like to have fun and do funny accents. That's just me. 
I do a killer Indian accent that I will not do here. <laughs> but I love all cultures, all races, and it just so happens that I'm influenced by all different things. I've worked with just about all different kinds of people and I've absorbed so much from them. Is that even funny? I can't do it. I don't have the power. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yes, you guys. So we're going to go with some. I'm just looking for something to like, you know, I'm running out of supplies here. So <laughs> I'm going to grab this little lid right here. Accept it. You're crazy. Don't cover it. I'm not covering it up. It's fine. Listen, these voices that I come out with, whatever it is, these are not voices that I hear in my head. <laughs> I'm not talking to them. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> this is just me having fun. I always liked it acting when I was younger. And, you know, doing these weird accents and all of this stuff is just part of it. I was always kind of artistic, I guess. Always into all of that stuff. From singing to acting to painting and drawing, I was in every single type of class there was associated with those three things. So that's just my nature. It's just my nature. That's why when you come here, you get a little bit of singing. You hear some quirky little sounds here and there. Ooh, yes, this blue. I'm gonna have to give my phone a serious wipe down. This thing has dots everywhere. That you can put your either your book in or your project in and do it inside of a box, then not then doing it kind of out in the open like I am because I'm very carefree, and usually I spend a couple hours. Yes, indeed. And even this thing that was a complete mistake, this thing. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to make believe it is a bridge far, far away. <laughs> it's going to stay there. So if anybody ever sees my art journal page and says, what happened there? I'll be like, it's a bridge. Okay, it's a bridge. Leave it alone. It's a bridge. That's what I'm going to tell. It's a bridge. Just let it go. That's what it is. It's a bridge. So. There we go. Sanson, you have some scraps to play with. with. Some beautiful dots. And my page, you guys. <laughs> so you guys, my page is done. Yes, yes. It's done. Whoop, whoop. We did it. I can't believe it. I came on live all like so out of normal for me because usually I will plan it. That's the only thing I plan is the days that I'm going to go live and the time that I'm going to go live. Because I like to let you guys know like, hey, I'm coming live. Usually it's every Saturday at 6 p.m. Most of you guys already know that. So you're already kind of aware that, hey, it's Saturday. Carmen might be on soon. But for a Sunday, it's very rare that I do this on a Sunday. But I'm glad I did. And um, here is what I created, and hopefully you guys can see the page and all of its glory. Sorry for the glare, but I will try to get that in there as well as I can. Oop, don't worry, don't worry about the bridge in the bottom. The bridge is out. The bridge is out, you guys. The bridge is out. So with that being said, you guys, thank you all so, so much for hanging out with me tonight, for giving me your time, your laughter, your thumbs up, your support, everything else. Thank you all so, so much. I will catch you guys on the next one. Hugs and kisses to all of you. And I will catch you later. Bye.